hello guys welcome to a new video on gamma of negative whole numbers including zero so what do we want to do or what do we want to learn we want to learn how to find gamma of zero gamma of minus one gamma of minus two and gamma of minus three and so on and so forth okay so negative integers rather and zero so we are going to use this recursive relation that gamma of um, n plus 1 is equal to n gamma of n. So this is the recursive relation that we're going to use. So if you make gamma of n the subject of the formula, you're going to get gamma of n is gamma of n plus 1 divided by n. So let's start with gamma of 0. So gamma of 0, as you can see, will be gamma of 0 plus 1 divided by 0. So this approaches um, infinity because we'll have gamma of 1 gamma of 0 plus 1 is gamma of 1 everybody knows that gamma of 1 is what who knows gamma of 1 gamma of 1 is 0 factorial and 0 factorial mathematically is still 1 so if you want to know how 0 factorial is 1 you have to what evaluate <laughs> this integral for the definition of gamma functions x to the n minus 1 exponential minus x dx okay and you're going to solve for n equal to um, 1 in this formula so you're going to get um, y is 0 factorial is 1 but I'm going to do that in another video I don't want to do much on that now so um, you have gamma of 0 which is um, gamma of 0 plus 1 divided by 0 gamma of 1 is 1, um, one and 1 divided by 0 is infinity okay so gamma of 0 is infinity now let's evaluate gamma of minus 1 with the same recurrence relation we will have minus 1 plus 1 divided by minus 1 according to this formula over here okay so you have gamma of 0 divided by minus 1 and this gives me like an infinity again okay so let me just be using unsigned infinity why is it infinity so because gamma of zero okay gamma of zero is infinity infinity divided by minus one is infinity if i want to be strict with sign i'll call it minus infinity but i'm not going to call it like that for now i'm not going to call it minus infinity for now so you have gamma of minus two which is gamma of minus two plus one all over minus two which is gamma of minus one all over what minus two and if you evaluate it gamma of minus one is still infinity so gamma of minus two will be infinity all over minus two which is still infinity so if we keep going for all negative whole numbers we are going to observe that gamma of minus three will be gamma of minus two all over what minus three and this is still another version of infinity so um from the observation okay you might be wondering what's happening to the signs um i will not be able to prove this in this video at this age but don't worry um in time to come i'll show you that um the gamma of zero and all negative all numbers is in fact plus and minus infinity plus or minus infinity so plus or minus infinity so gamma of of n okay is plus or minus infinity if n is less than or equal to zero and n is a whole number okay so we are not trying to say all negative ends are zero we are just talking about the um whole numbers okay the whole numbers and one way that you will appreciate um this whole stuff is when you get to see the graph of the gamma function so i have downloaded a picture of the graph of the gamma function and we want to see how and why this is how i just explained it okay so um let me show you the picture of the gamma function 
So this is the picture of the gamma function. So if you observe the gamma function very critically, you can see, I hope you can see my mouse, the gamma of zero, you understand? This curve that is coming from the right hand side, it goes, it's an, it's an asymptote, sorry about that. Okay, it's an asymptote and it gets as far as going to infinity okay the curve will keep going and it will touch this line at infinity now you should also notice that there is another curve coming from this side and it's going downwards so on zero zero we have like infinite jumps okay we have a jump and one of the boundaries is plus infinity another boundary is minus infinity so the same thing happens in minus one so for minus one we have a curve going down to minus infinity and another one coming up towards plus infinity so now you see um, 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 for negative two if you observe very carefully the same thing is happening so you have plus or minus infinity and three you have minus or plus infinity four you have plus or minus infinity and it keeps repeating like that it keeps repeating like that if you keep going down and you can see that the curves on the negative side they are gradually you know reducing to zero for all numbers between negative four and minus five the value of their gamma functions is getting like really really small and so on and so forth so um this is the graph of the gamma functions we have gamma of one gamma of one is one okay one is zero factorial and zero factorial is one so gamma of two is also one factorial and one factorial is one gamma of three is what who knows gamma of three very good two factorial two factorial is two as you can see it's here so gamma of four is three factorial three factorial is six as you can see it maps down to this place so for gamma of values between zero and one you can see that for values between zero and something like 0 0.3 they have very 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 large gamma values because gamma of zero is infinity it has a peak at infinity and minus infinity so um, 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 um it keeps decreasing between zero and one the gamma function decreases from zero to one then from one and two it almost remains constant then from two three four and five it starts increasing as you can see and keeps going like that so this is the analysis of the graph of the gamma function and you can use this graph to estimate um, values that are not whole numbers like if they give you gamma of 3 over 4 or gamma of 0 point something you can just quickly use the graph to evaluate it or you can use online calculators to determine the gamma of um of all the numbers we have not treated we've treated gammas of negative and positive half integers gamma of negative whole numbers and gamma of positive whole numbers okay so this brings us to the end of gamma function the next time we are going to be dealing with gamma function we are going to be dealing with it in a real example okay like the question that we solved in the first class so um i hope you have learned how to um solve um at least or understand the theory that is driving gamma functions so um in the next class i'm going to give us an example or just a simple problem in gamma functions and we are going to see how to resolve it in the next class so please like subscribe share hit the notification bell to stay updated and um i want you to um know that you are doing very well learning engineering mathematics is actually tough and challenging at times but you just have to be persistent and um you are going to excel so stay blessed till the next video where we will see an example in gamma functions all right bye